Parents, what's the funniest reason you've been called into school to collect your child? Viewer's Edition. You know, kid logic doesn't always make the most sense, but sometimes school administration logic doesn't either. And sometimes you get these perfect scenarios when the two just combine so pleasantly that you just have to bow your head and laugh at the ridiculousness that your kid has caused. Let's see what the viewers had to say about these scenarios. Story 1. Best way to deal with a guy who is being too talkative in class next to you is to get up and clench your fist and put it as far back behind you and clock the guy on the jaw. That's how I dealt with a guy like that. Except for me, the guy who was talking too much was talking crap about a girl who I was a close friend of, which ignited a fire in me, unleashing my most terrifying mode at that time, which I had proceeded to name the unholy trio of pain, because when I'm in that mode, the clenched fist clocking the jaw of someone is not the only thing that would happen once they're on the ground. I would deliver a kick to the ribs and then proceed to stomp their lights out. Here is the funny part of that whole incident. The guy who kept talking crap about the girl I was a close friend of was on one side of me, and the girl I was a close friend of was on the other side of me, and when I looked at her, she had her head down, so I got close enough to whisper in her ear, saying, if you want to see the scumbag get put in his place, lift your head and watch what is about to happen. She lifted her head up and saw everything that happened to the scumbag, not just that I pulled up to the front of the classroom and asked my teacher to not report me to the principal and let me do this, and the teacher just nodded to me because they saw what was going on and saw the rage and anger in my eyes, and I proceeded to beat the crap out of the scumbag and even told the whole class to look at the front of the classroom and to keep watching, and I said, this is what will happen if you talk crap about me or my close friends, and kept pummeling the scumbag until he looked like he was in a car wreck, and then dragged his butt by the collar of his shirt to the office and told the principal to call his parents and tell them their son better come back to school and apologize to my close friend in front of the entire school or he would be expelled from school. And I got away with what happened to him because I had explained what led to him looking like he was in a car wreck to the principal. Plus, I had an added bonus. During my time in the school, the principal and I had talked with each other about a lot of things, and we both were able to have a laugh with each other and joke around together. Plus, they were able to talk with my family, and were always telling my parents about how I'm doing and how great I am at school, and how much help I gave them with stopping the bullying in the school. I literally became a god in the school because of my friendship with the principal and the fear I had put in every darn bully in the school to the point the bullies just stopped bullying completely because they feared I could sense them and when I was around them, they all cowered in fear. <laughs> I'm gonna have to assume that this was a, a completely ironic take on the whole thing because it definitely doesn't make sense that he used bullying to end bullying. This guy seems like the biggest bully of them all if he's using his strength and his fear and inciting fear in everybody to make them stop bullying other people. I know this guy's one of the viewers, but I gotta call you out, man, or, or woman. Uh, you can't use violence to end violence. It's never a good idea. Story two. So at some point during fifth grade, I got randomly called to the principals and wasn't given any context until I got there. And then they immediately started constantly demanding I tell the truth. My naive self, who was about 10 at that point, asked what this was about. Turns out that the school thought that I had entered the women's restroom during some other class's lunch and was spying on them. The kicker to this accusation, it was quite literally impossible for me to be anywhere nearby the building when this happened. Context, the school was split up into many buildings. The main building, the area where the accused crime took place, the K-1 through building, the 2-3, through three, and half of the 4th grade building. The other half of 4th grade, one half of 6th grade building, the area I was in at every time the crime could have possibly happened, and the other half of 6th grade, through junior high. So they kept demanding I tell the truth when I had literally no idea what this was about. It took over two hours before two girls, the witnesses to the accused crime, went right up to the principal and told them that they forgot that the guy who did the crime looked to be in their grade and wore glasses. Now keep in mind that I was tall and didn't wear glasses. The funniest part was the look on their face as I stared directly into the principal's eye and told the principal directly that not only did they waste valuable time of mine, but they wasted the valuable time of my family. 
They had called my family and they were waiting in the lobby and told me this, and the valuable time of their own staff. At that point in time, I didn't give a care and ripped that principal a new bunghole after I requested that the two innocent girls would be taken out of the room. Now I had my problems with the principal, a lot actually, and they all were revealed. Heck, I had my phone and I secretly recorded it. The file was lost when my phone was broken at a school dance that I was working for as a part of a student council. All in all, I left that room satisfied and that principal never wanted to deal with me again. That principal left the same year and we got a principal that people actually liked. My parents were curious about what happened since by the time it was finished, it was about time for school to end. So when we left and they asked, I just played the audio of me ripping that principal a new butthole. My parents were actually impressed. The best part is, the next day, everyone was wondering what happened, and I just said, essentially, I got wrongly identified for a crime that I never did or could have committed. And I've told this story many times to a lot of people. Also, a quick fun fact, I was also a Boy Scout at this time. Left, like, two years afterwards for personal reasons. Hmm, what about the fifth graders? He neglected to mention where the fifth graders reside. I think there's a bigger conspiracy going on here. Maybe he can use his Boy Scout skills and scout out where they've all gone. Perhaps a detective badge would be in order. Story 3. I believe she was in third grade when the school called about my daughter graphically threatening to hunt down and end the life of a fellow student in her school. Obviously, when I got there, I asked the full story, as my daughter had always been very good-natured and friendly. The offended party was a fifth grade boy who had gone home and told his parents about said incident, and they had called the school very upset. In this meeting were the principal, her teacher, my daughter, and myself. As the story unfolds, I come to find out that her first statement to the boy was that she was going to Jeffrey Dahmer him, which he did not understand, so she clarified this by telling him, I know where you live. I will hunt you down and eat your liver. At this point, I'm trying not to laugh, because she was obsessed with the song Cannibal from Kesha, and had asked who Dahmer was. So being a scientist and a good dad, I helped her do some research. So I knew where that came from at least. It further turns out is that this boy had been picking on her repeatedly, physically as well as verbally, and this had not only been brought to the teacher's attention, but also witnessed by more than one teacher, yet nothing had been done about it. She was even able to provide names. When I told her right in front of them that it was impolite to go around threatening people, But she had every right to defend herself, and that is what she should do if it happened again. The principal got a wee bit irate with me, which never gets a good response. I'm not exactly a Sheldon Cooper sort of scientist, so my tone changes as well. I point out that under the law, there is a right to defend oneself, and that those laws are specifically strengthened in our state. Also that I didn't give a darn about their policies, as any policy they have that goes against the law is invalid. Also that they have a legal obligation to provide a safe environment at school, and they were failing to do so. And they were failing to do so while being fully aware of the situation. As I pointed to my phone, which was now sitting on the desk, with the voice recorder open, very obviously having made a recording of the entire conversation. At that point, I told my daughter to come with me and tell the school I expect them to handle the situation properly on their end and that it would be best that I not have to deal with this any further, as they will not like the outcome. There were no other issues with this boy, and she is in her teens now and does not remove anyone from the planet. Story 4 I moved into a new school in first grade. My teacher was very strict. Sit quietly, hands folded at your desk type. I was quite loud, having been in a progressive 1960s school before, so battle ensued. Things like turning book pages loudly while reading, those types of things. One day I had to go to the restroom, so, as required, I raised my hand to get a hall pass. The teacher ignored me until I peed all over the classroom floor. My mother was called. She worked second shift and was not happy. She then called my grandfather, her father, to drive her over to the school. When they arrived, the principal recognized them, and to this, said teacher I was at war with was his wife. She then had to explain, after we both told our versions of the story, why I was ignored until I peed all over the classroom. 
I have two relating to my younger brother. In kindergarten, my brother and his teacher got into an argument about my father's job, and he was sent to the principal's office. When my parents arrived to an in-tears son and a principal trying to explain that my father was not on welfare. Turns out that since my father was a federal employee, my mom teased him about being on welfare. So my brother stood up in class and proudly announced that his father was on welfare. In the third grade, my brother was sent home for wearing inappropriate pants, supposedly tie-dyed. The pants were four different pieces of material dyed in different colors sewed together. So my brother goes home and wakes my mother, who was still working second shift. She then dragged him back to school and right into the principal's office. Asked why he was sent home, he said because the pants were tie-dyed. She then asked him to look at the pants and point out the point of where they were tie-dyed. He looked at them and could not find any points of tie-dye on the pants. He then said that even though they were not tie-dyed, they were against the dress code. My mother then asked for a copy of said dress code. Well, the elementary school did not have one, but they were using the middle school dress code. My mom then pointed out that he was in violation of said dress code in that he was wearing a tie-dyed red, white, and blue necktie, and that his secretary was wearing a skirt so short that you could see her panties. After that, the school board was called. Needless to say, the school principal was not working at that school three days later. Other things were involved, but that incident was the icing on the cake for him. Yeah, I never understood dress codes, really. Uh, kids should be allowed to be kids. Same goes for, like, corporate attire and business wear. I feel like I'm just as capable of getting my work done wearing shorts and a t-shirt as I am wearing business clothes, suit and tie. Blah. Uh, probably more capable, actually, because I'm more relaxed and I'm not fussing about with how I look and my tucked-in shirt and all that jazz. And even from the opposite side, I'm probably more willing to trust people that are dressed in normal clothes than people dressed in business clothes, suits and ties, that kind of puts me off because it becomes very apparent to me that they're trying to put on a fake identity to try to sell me something. No way. Story 5. Not apparent, but the kid who had his mother called. I take a prescription, up medication, that wakes up the body. That morning, I had the sniffles and it took Benadryl cold medicine. For anyone who doesn't know, Benadryl is a down medication. It causes the body to wind down. For those who don't know, you don't mix up and down meds. I then drove to school since I was in 11th grade and had a car. I don't remember the drive there very well, but I do remember parking the car because that's when the effects took effect. Suddenly, the line split from two to four and then smashed back together with what looked like sparkles coming off it. I instantly realized something was wrong. I went to my Spanish teacher, who was also a registered nurse in practice and still had her license at the time, and through my uncontrollable giggles, said that I needed some help because something wasn't right with me. I explained what I did that morning, and after my teacher researched my prescription, started laughing. Now, mind you, while she was looking up my prescription, she was asking me questions, like, how do you feel? Seeing a picture of a melting clock on her wall, I pointed to it and said, I feel like that. After the teacher realized that I had accidentally gotten myself high, she went to my teachers, explained what I had actually done, done <laughs> explained what I had accidentally done, and told me she was going to have me sent to the nurse's office until it was out of my system. In the nurse's office, apparently I had the nurse laughing so hard while she called my mother. According to my mom, the call went something like this. Mom. Hello? Nurse. Me laughing out loud in the background, and the nurse chuckling. Uh, hello, Mrs. Uh, just want to let you know your sons are not in trouble. However, due to a mistake he made this morning, he is going to be in my office until he is no longer high. My mother. What? The nurse, through her chuckling, explains the situation. I got home that day, and to this day, it's both my mom's and my own favorite story to tell. Too long didn't read, accidentally got high while at school, and didn't get in trouble. Story 6. I'm not a parent, as I'm only 17, but this is a story from my mom about younger me. I didn't even make it to my classroom to even meet my teacher on the official first day of preschool because I had gotten on the bus and said bye while waving to my mom. A kid gets on the bus next to me and sits. My mom had to come get me from the school because I had punched this kid in the face on the way to the school for talking about my mom 
and they had to drop everyone off to the school first so the bus couldn't just turn and go back or pull over for her to pick me up from there. So I had to be picked up right from the main office. And my first day of preschool was actually the second day of preschool for everyone else. When the school called, my mom was trying not to laugh because she thought it was funny, but knew it wasn't funny at the same time. Eventually, she couldn't hold it. She busted out laughing. My grandfather came to my house the same day, and as my mom was telling him what happened, he had to run to the bathroom because he didn't want her to see he was laughing because he felt it was funny, but knew that at the same time, it wasn't. Two minutes after he goes for the bathroom, we hear him roar with laughter so hard it was like he was right next to us laughing. Kid, that's not your mommy. Me, yes it is. No, that's not your mommy. Yes, it is. You're lying. No, that is my mommy. She doesn't look like your mommy. She's so fat and ugly, but you're pretty. Don't talk about my mommy. I love my mommy, and my mommy is the most beautiful mommy to me in the world. I punched him square in the face after. Story 7. My mom got called in because I was swearing at the recess teacher when I was in second or third grade. I'm autistic and didn't swear once until I was in high school. I was so angry, it reduced me to tears, because nobody believed me. Mom had to point out that nobody had ever once heard me swear before anyone took two seconds to think about it. They all just took the recess teacher's word for it. Not being believed about my own words took a huge chunk out of my self-confidence and ability to trust others. It wasn't the first time, but it was the largest scale it ever happened on. No one, from my teacher to the secretaries to the principal, believed me until my mom showed up, no matter what I said and they just got mad at me for refusing to admit it and apologize. As an adult, if I had called her a witch, she would have deserved it. She was a witch. She was lazy, mean, and on an obvious power trip. She got all kinds of kids in trouble for the tiniest infractions and misunderstandings. I am to this day convinced she rang the recess bell, an actual physical handbell, either quieter than everyone else, or she never went more than 10 feet from the door until she was storming the full acre walk across the parking lot, across the field, and across the playground for how often me and my friends got in trouble for ignoring her so we could skip class. Every time someone else rang the bell, they did a full circuit of the playground to make sure we heard. With such consistency, I'm pretty sure it must have been part of the instructions. Mrs. G, if you're out there, I wish I had called you a witch, to your face, at top volume, for every kid in that school. I wish I gave you the cussing out you deserved, you freaking witch. Story 8. Oh, the handwriting story is something I did my entire time at school. Either I write fast, meaning it's unreadable, or I write slow and don't finish exams as I try to keep it readable. Now I'm a slow writer with a fancy and easy to read and pleasant to look at handwriting. However, I don't like to write by hand because it physically hurts, and yet still nobody believes me. I'm 23 and not a single soul believes me that it hurts to write by hand. As in pain, actual pain, that very fast gets so bad that I physically can't hold a pen or pencil or anything, really, due to a said pain. At least uh, nowadays, I don't need to write stuff by hand. As as you can see, I can type. How is typing different from writing? Position. My right hand is in a relaxed position, which means I can type as much for as long as I want without any single issue regarding some bad pain arriving. Aside from nerve issues, of course. Now the damage is cemented in my hand and I can't even enjoy drawing things. I often feel the urge, the want, the need to draw, but can't because it hurts. Because, you know, holding a pen, pencil, even a brush hurts a ton. And that's why my art grades were that bad. It's not that I wasn't creative. I can't maintain a mental image and try to translate it over and get better at it while I'm stressed out due to pain, obviously. I am an admirer of good handwriting. It's a shame, though, that I don't have good handwriting myself. It's definitely one of those use-it-or-lose-it skills. And since nowadays I hardly ever use my handwriting to do anything other than sign my signature, um, I've definitely lost it. But that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate it for others. Uh, Recently I was writing a, a handwritten Mother's Day card and I just felt so incompetent. But on the flip side, when I receive cards from other people and they're handwritten, I definitely like to take a look at it and, and uh, appreciate their, their extra swoopy cursive or any type of handwriting that's got personality injected into it.
It's quite nice. Story 9. I was home after work, and my phone rang. It's my youngest sister's high school. They requested someone pick up my sister. I arrive at the school, and my sister is waiting in the office. I ask the receptionist, why does my sister have to leave school? The receptionist said, dress code violation. I looked at my sister and saw she was wearing the school uniform. I said, what? She's wearing her provided uniform. Receptionist says, that was provided to you by the school? I nodded. Receptionist said, I guess there was a mistake because clearly this uniform is too small considering how tight it is in the chest. At this moment, I turned and realized that over the summer, my sister had uh, grown up. The button-up shirt was practically bursting. I bet the high school boys love that. We were given replacement shirts that weren't so tight and went home. When my mother heard what happened, she said, Well, we, family name, are busty people. Every woman in our family has that trait. So, growing a D-cup over the summer isn't that shocking. But why did it happen so late? Your oldest sister had hers growing towards the end of middle school. I simply walked away. Later on, I told my work friends, Did you know modern schools send you home if your boobaloobaloobies are too big? Story 10. I was two grades ahead of my sister in elementary school. The school nurse couldn't reach my parents. When I was nine, I was pulled out of class to go to the nurse's office for an emergency. My little sister was sitting there in the nurse's office, looking fine. The nurse asked me what our aunts or uncles or grandparents' phone numbers were. They lived out of state, and I didn't know their phone numbers. I did know our older brother went to junior high a few miles away. The nurse called the junior high to have him take my little sister home. The nurse explained why. She used grown-up medical terms like gastric distress and elimination and observation of bowel movements. When she left, I asked my sister, Do you understand what's happening? Did you poop? She said, no, not yet. She had swallowed her coat button, but I have to watch my caca to see if it comes out. Well, my older brother got a free afternoon babysitting little sister. Mom and dad were informed by a written note and had to have my little sister translate. Story 11. My mom had to attend an emergency meeting with my grade one teacher, a disability counselor, and the vice principal. This was the 90s, so my mom found out about the meeting by the letter I brought home. It said the meeting was due to the fact I couldn't read. So the next evening, my mom came to the emergency meeting, sat down with three people, and asked what the heck they were talking about. Then I told them about my Narnia and Redwall obsession, and the teacher said I must be looking at the pictures. There were basically no pictures. These were like 300 to 400 page books. My mom then asked my teacher why she thought I couldn't read, because I hadn't drawn a penguin as described in a little worksheet she had handed out. My mom called me into the room to explain. I don't like penguins. Case closed, and four adult evenings wasted. What? A kid that doesn't like penguins? What kind of childhood can you have if you didn't ever play Club Penguin? Shame. Rockhopper would be disheartened. And on that note, another MMORPG that I played growing up, RuneScape, had a popular ongoing quest series about penguins undercover in a cold war. Easily one of my fondest memories of the game was running around the map trying to spy on these hidden penguins with my friends. Good times. Story 12. I didn't get sent home for it, but in my sophomore year of high school, my parents got a call from the guidance counselor. They suspected I was smoking cigarettes because I smelled like cigarette smoke. My parents respond with zero hesitation, Of course he smells like smoke. His parents smoke three packs a day each, for context. As long as anyone can remember, I've hated cigarettes because my parents knew I wasn't smoking. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.